Hi, I'm Catherine Diorio, and this week on Check Please, Development Manager Jose Macias says if you want to expand your taste buds to a whole new level of Thai cuisine, he says he's got a terrific hidden gem for you to try. But paralegal Claudia Perry makes the case for a magical Midwestern experience where the food, service, and atmosphere rise above the rest. Up first, finance manager Annie Law says a friendly atmosphere, reasonable prices, and the most unique flavors of any Mexican restaurant in the city add up to a delicious dining experience. That's why she says you got to run on over to Pilsen and find five Robinitos. Food is my passion. My food is a authentic Mexican food. We try to make good flavors, fresh flavors, get people left happy and enjoy it. We're making tacos, tortas, tamales, and make courses. When they taste it, I saw the faces. When they taste my food, like people say they left happy. People say, oh man, this is beautiful place. This is like more fiesta restaurant. My colors is looking like something like strong color, like fiesta party in the restaurant. It look like, like family parties. Making food for any customer come. I'm really, really happy. And I would say, you know what? My customers and my food is my love. So Annie, you say five Rabanitos rocks. Tell us why you chose it. Oh, I love five Rabanitos um, because um, they have their high quality, flavorful Mexican food and the chef cooks it with love. I discovered the restaurant about seven months ago mm -hmm. And me and my husband, we found ourselves going back to the restaurant like maybe every two weeks, sometimes <laughs> weekly. Mm -hmm. Depends on what they post on Facebook <laughs> on the special. Mm -hmm. So um, it's delicious. A couple of things that I love is the chicken, mm -hmm. grilled chicken rabanito style. Mm -hmm. It's so juicy, delicious. And if you ask him to do mole sauce on it, he will mm -hmm. put mole sauce on it. Mole so, is awesome. Oh, <laughs> mole is such a labor of love. Oh, it I is. know. Absolutely. So you sound like you liked the mole. Oh, yeah. We, uh, when I went with my friend, we had the uh, tamal, which is just like this sort of, it's like paved with mole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that is just so rich. It was just spectacular. Um, right. And then the Puerco Rancho, which I had when they were there, which is sort of looked like kind of like a Ropa Vieja. Mm -hmm. That was sort of like a little smoky, almost like barbacoa, but better than kind of like your chain Mexican mm -hmm. idea. And then with that, which I thought was kind of unusual, but fabulous, was they had mashed potatoes. Who doesn't like mashed potatoes? I don't like mashed potatoes. Yeah, so it was just, it was really just incredibly delicious dining experience. I thought everything was great. I took a very tough critic, my father, who was born and raised in Mexico, and he would be honest definitely with me and the people there and tell anyone if it oh. was bad, but we loved everything about oh, it. Oh, that's great. I also had the chicken habanito style. You can taste the honey and the garlic mm -hmm. and every mm -hmm. bite. The honey was an overkill. I had, one, part of our appetizers was a torta ahogada. It's different than other sandwiches. The bread needs to be really crispy, and this had mm. the perfect crisp to it. Since it sits in the chili broth, and with every mm. bite you can taste that crunch, and they asked us if we liked it spicy, and oh. my eyes were watering, so that's, how, <laughs> that's a good thing, though. So that's how I knew that it was spicy. And you could tell that a lot of the food is regional, and that's what I like mm -hmm. about it is I, I'm looking forward to going back because there's a lot of different items on there that I want to try. So is this like a typical taqueria where there's rice beans slapped on a plate and some tacos? Absolutely not. They, um, the kinds of dish, like ceramic ware you would see mm -hmm. at a high-end restaurant, which I think would make sense because the chef had done some time with Rick Bayless. 16 mm -hmm. years Yeah. Bayless. Um, I got the guacamole, you know, to start, and it was in this sort of wonderful curved dish that had this little scoop in the middle for the guacamole, which is absolutely beautiful presentation. And also I noticed the radish sticks. What a wonderful sort of addition, because you had that crunch and you had a little mm -hmm. bit of heat from that. So there was 
radish sticks in the guacamole. There were radish sticks, I think, in the ceviche verde. So I thought mm -hmm. that those there were really... There was radishes on top of everything. That's yeah, what, pretty that's much. That's what habaneto's means. That's his yeah. signature, yeah, right. Well, it's yeah. really, I think the story is so cute. It's called Five Rabanitos because his family in Mexico actually grew radishes, mm. and oh. him and his four brothers would take okay. them to the market and sell them. Oh, so okay. it's a tribute to his family, the name. Oh, yes, which I, I think just is very thought sweet. He likes reddish. <laughs> <laughs> well, but no, I there was nothing about the experience that I would trade except for the idea that I want to make a note to go back as soon as I possibly can. So you went with your friend. Who else would you bring there? Um, I went with my husband because um, he's my dining buddy mm -hmm. and I love him. Um, but I also sent a tons of friends there before, mm. and all of them they really like it, and that's a place that we go with our, our of town guests too. Because someone always can find something that they like, even if you're vegetarian, they have a vegetarian menu. Mm. And like one thing, I don't know if you try, um, they serve with homemade tortilla. Oh yes, other yes, yes. Oh my God, it's like it's like chewing clouds. That's how <laughs> I would describe it. Oh no, it. absolutely, as those are yeah. so perfect. As soon as I grabbed mine, you could just tell that oh, they were yeah. homemade, and they had to bring us more tortillas because we just kept eating them with all that we were eating. Also, you cannot go to a Mexican restaurant without trying the tres leches. Yes. That, I think you all had that. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's so I had made the, by him. It's so good. My dining companion is newly pregnant. Best people in the world to go out to eat with because they are always hungry. Right. They're game for pretty much anything. But you know, we almost had like a spoon battle over that because it was like you know, getting down to the last piece and like the spoons are clashing in the middle of the plate because it's like I want the last piece. No, I want the last piece. So well, Annie, you chose five rabanitos. Sum it up for us. High end Mexican food and um, cooks with love. Jose, I would say it's flavorful Mexican food that will transport you south of the border. Claudia, um, I would say it is Mexican food that is part of Mexico, but it's totally out of this world. Oh, wow, great. You can try it for yourself at Five Robinitos, 1758 West 18th Street, 312-285-2710. Open for lunch and dinner, Tuesday through Sunday, and also for breakfast on the weekends. Reservations are accepted, alcohol is BYOB, and the average tab per person is $18. Claudia Perry lives in Evanston and she likes it even more now that all kinds of restaurants are coming her way. She says for one of the best new places in the entire Chicago area, make your way to Davis Street and stop by Boltwood. Working together with my wife is, is, dream, is, come is true. a dream come true. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. The real treat is getting to figure out all this stuff and, and make this place work together. So the people that dine here at Boltwood, it's really a mix. You get a lot of families, and I feel because of our cocktail list, you get a lot of younger people that just really nice. There are no boundaries to what we do. I mean, we, we serve pasta. We cook with soy sauce, um, but it, it's heavily market driven. And so if there's something great at the market, that's what leads the charge into the dishes that we make. Yeah, it should be fun. On a Saturday night, it can get loud and uh, it can be exciting and fun and bustling. Um, but during the week, it can be very relaxing. Brian and I like to say that we're treating them as if they're coming into our home to eat, so they should expect to be greeted warmly as if they were in our warm, loving home.
to Claudia. You say dining at Boltwood always makes you feel at home. Tell Absolutely. us why you chose it. There's just something sort of wonderful to be at a restaurant where, you know, there's a list of their farm suppliers and they're all local. I mean, like the night that my friend and I went, they had Indiana shrimp on the menu, which I thought was kind mm -hmm. of an interesting idea. Um, Menu changes constantly. I was, you know, I had octopus there a few months ago and that was just absolutely expertly prepared. You know, the presentation is great. One of the things that they do let you know when you come in is that, you know, they kind of pace the meal for you because mm -hmm. the idea is that the entrees are designed to be shared. Mm -hmm. You know, the kitchen is open so you can kind of see what's going on mm -hmm. in there. The uh, chef, Brian Houston, who used to be a publican, you know, he comes out sometimes and will serve dishes uh, mm -hmm. to you at your table. and. So one of the things that can sometimes make it a little difficult, uh, as much as I love the place, is you know if you're going and say you're looking at a menu online, there's a good chance that by the time you get there, it's gonna be different just based on what's in right. season and kind of what is the mood that the chef mm -hmm. is kind of in at that point. You talk about being seasonal, and that was one of the first things that I noticed is the actual dates was on my menu. Mm -hmm. And you could tell that it was going to be farm fresh ingredients that were in season. And I definitely know what you mean, that they try to space things out because I think our first two dishes came out spaced perfectly with our entree actually being spaced too much. And that was one of the things, mm -hmm. while I did like the food and I thought it was very flavorful, at least our appetizers and the desserts, the entree didn't hit. And for me, the service was actually subpar. It took a while to get my drink. They never asked me if I wanted another drink, which I probably would have had. Mm -hmm. We had to ask him the questions, which I thought in that place, I want to also be wild with the service as well. Mm -hmm. I ordered the, wi the wild salmon with some shelly beans and an mm -hmm. almond pesto. Mm -hmm. And I actually thought that the different beans and pesto took away from the flavor of the wild salmon. Mm -hmm. My wife got the pork chop. My the, husband had that, it was good. That was good. <laughs> when we were splitting the dish, I was actually more happy to eat hers. <laughs> <laughs> Than it Don't you than hate I when was, that happens? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plate envy. Right, exactly. <laughs> we went on. Um, we went on a Sunday night, and uh, you know we got there, order our drinks, and then uh, also the appetizer. But the appetizer came first before we got our drinks, and, <coughs> and then the us. drinks came, and um, it was the wine drinks. And uh, it took Beer. a few minutes to, I think the server might have a, you know, off day, it happens. The server was nice. I mean, he gave us some olives in between while we wait. I had the appetizer. Um, I got the, the pretzel with the cheese sauce. That was delicious. And the broccoli served with mo smoked tomato aioli. Mm. It's to die for. I mean, I, I would say it's a vegetarian's heaven. Right. And, yes. um, and uh, you know, the, f the grilled fish that I have is the whole fish. Mm -hmm. um, like the skin was crispy. Like we were definitely happy with our food. Mm -hmm. um, so it's d delicious. And so I ordered the Tom Skilling, which is a rum based drink. It was mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. So um, we like the drinks, we like the food. Ambience were great. Mm -hmm. And it's very sleek, very modern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very friendly, um, family friendly because we saw kids. And then I look at the kids menu too. I was like, oh, I want to try the mac and cheese because it looked <laughs> like adult food. There was a table right <laughs> behind us. I think it was maybe parents, grandparents, and then y the young children. Wow. So it is a place for everyone. I was so excited and happy to go there. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't hit on all cylinders for me. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear you guys had a bad experience, but I would what I would say is even Renee Fleming sends out of tune every now and then. So, um, <laughs> you know, our server was very much on top of his game, and you know we got these garlic schmaltz yeah, potatoes, potatoes, which are just like X-rated tater tots. <laughs> they are so good, and you know, you know, roast chicken was really good. Mm -hmm. The pepperdale with lamb and uh, feta. That was a really wonderful combination of flavors. You also had the homemade mm -hmm. pasta, which, as we all know, there is hardly anything on earth that is better than homemade <laughs> pasta. Well, let's talk about where it is. It's in downtown Evanston. Yes. Uh, well, right now, I think that there has been a sense that Evanston is going to be a great sort of dining destination because mm -hmm. it's relatively close to the city, right. you've got access to public transit. I think a lot of people are beginning to realize that you know you can kind of stake your claim and have a really good restaurant right. without necessarily having to be you know in the thick of things where the rents are high and everything else. And I think you know if you you know to go on the website and you look a little bit about the history of the place, mm -hmm. I mean it takes its name from the freshman wing of Evanston Township High School. Right. So um, you know, there's a very Evanston vibe. Claudia, you chose Boltwood. Sum it up for us. It's sort of love and fun, seasons in the sun. If you want to 
just experience kind of the bounty of what the Midwest has to offer, cooked well and uh, with a very lively atmosphere, this is the place for you. Great. Jose? Upscale farm to table restaurants that unfortunately lacked in service for me. Annie? Um, I will say is, um, it's good for family and it's good for dates and we'll go back. You can try the pork chop and more at Boltwood, 804 Davis Street in Evanston, 847-859-2880. Open for lunch and dinner, Tuesday through Sunday, and also for brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is $35. <laughs> At the Bar is made possible in part by Chicago Northwest Restaurant Week. Visit DineChicagoNW.com for more information. Hi, I'm Anthony. We're at the Bar. Today we're going to be making a classic New Orleans cocktail called a Vieux Carré. We're going to start off with a little Benedictine, a wonderful spiced French liqueur. We're going to add a little bit of bonded rye, higher proof in alcohol. Good for the soul. We're gonna add a little bit of Carpano Antica, my favorite Italian Rosso Vermouth. And we're gonna top it off with a little bit of cognac. Pure Fran 1840. We're also gonna add some Creole bitters and some Angostura bitters, both of which are pretty aromatic and add a nice little spice to the cocktail. Think about salt and pepper for your cocktails. We're gonna stir to proper dilution. Serve it neat. Then we're gonna add a little bit of citrus oil to the top. I like to use a lemon. Some people prefer orange. And there you have it, a Vucare for those cold winter nights. One thing that Jose Macias is worried about these days is whether people will stampede to his recommendation after seeing it on the show. He says for a small spot with big flavors, follow him to Edgebrook and try Elephant Thai. This is the, thai, the small Thai restaurant that's been serving the best food for decades. That's it. The food. When I starting it, I try to think what my grandmom and my mom used to cook and serve me. And uh, I'm from Bangkok, so normally all the food come from that area. My favorite is the chicken satay is serving with the peanut sauce and cucumber salad. And, and the mooping is the grilled marinade pork in a stick. The neighborhood is very nice to me, you know. I came from far away, from Bangkok. I came here and then have a friend like this, you know, it's like, it's more than customer, it's more than friend, you know. Being able to do something that you're passionate about, you know, for a living also, is, is very grateful. I, I don't know how I can say to them thank you enough. Jose, you say Elephant Thai is unforgettable. Why'd you choose it? It's a place that I've been going to now for a number of years with a lot of my family, my mom, my aunts, cousins, grandparents, people from out of town, out of the country, and it just always delivers. It is fresh Thai food, and I've never been disappointed, and it's very well priced. When I go to, I actually just recently discovered the one of their bubble drinks which oh, is basically okay. like a pineapple smoothie with the tapioca pearls. So refreshing. I used to get the Pad Kiwan, mm -hmm. which has fresh asparagus, fresh green beans. I love the chicken satay there, a nice peanut sauce. And usually we will get a lot of different dishes and just split them. To me, what I love is on every single dish, your plate will be filled with different colors of different fresh vegetables in every single bite. Great. Annie, what do you think? Um, I actually bought my uh, girlfriend's family. So um, four adults, two kids, we went there because we, I thought um, we're going to share a lot of food. Mm -hmm. So um, we ordered um, we order three appetizers um, and four entrees to okay. share. Um, I wasn't impressed about it. I think it was okay. Um, you're right, the, uh, this, 
definitely a lot of fresh vegetables, um, I, but I was looking for a little bit more flavor. I thought it was a little <coughs> bit bland. You didn't think bland. it was flavorful? It, it was okay. I don't think it's bad. Well, I saw Thai people eating there, so I'm sure it's authentic. <laughs> and um, I think they are a little bit more creative uh, on the menu as well because um, one of the dishes that we order called um, emerald noodles, which is mm -hmm. like green noodles, poppy spinach noodles that serve with um, lump crab meat. So, you know, it sounds really good. And But then, you know, when the dish was brought out to us, it was just lack of flavor and the noodles were a little bit overcooked. So my little kid friend was not, um, like he normally clean out everything that we left on the table <laughs> and yeah. that day he didn't do that. So the spiciness is definitely there. We ordered the papaya salad. Yeah. Um, so the papaya salad was good. Um, and then we ordered um, the pad thai as well, the garlic seafood. Mm -hmm. um, the garlic seafood was a little bit salty. So, um, but it was, I mean, it's, I think it's still a good get together place. I, I can tell it's authentic. It was probably just not our cup of tea. However, the chicken satay that we ordered was really good. Like you said, it's very, you know, the kids were actually fighting for it. <laughs> so, so, Claudia, what'd you think? Well, there were like three items on the menu that I would recommend strongly. Um, the duck curry was good, um, roasted duck curry, and then the Thai sausage appetizer, which has a big red star on it next to the menu. Mm -hmm has it for good reason. I also did the Mu Ping, which is kind of a pork <coughs> skewer. Mu Ping is delicious. Mm -hmm. And that's really delicious. Um, we also had the, I think it was a seafood curry. And I would kind of have to agree with Annie. I just didn't feel like things were special enough. Mm -hmm. I think everybody kind of has their go-to Thai place in their mm -hmm. neighborhood that they're mm -hmm. gonna call for takeout and then they're gonna go there. Um, probably if I lived in Edgebrook, that would be my go-to takeout place. Mm -hmm. Why? So it's nothing yeah. you would travel for then? No. I no. moved out to the suburbs not too long ago, but happily go there, especially now if I'm meeting some of my family that live in the area. And to me, Elephant Thai is still my barometer when I'm eating at other Thai restaurants. Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of people are really used to Northeastern Thai food, and, and um, the owner is from Bangkok. So mm -hmm. it's more Southern Thai food, which tends to be a little <coughs> spicy. And then there's also these sour notes mm -hmm. and not that spicy kick in the face, mm -hmm. you know, spicy, but kind of that like long burn spicy. Yeah, I call it the sneaky heat. Right, <laughs> exactly. It's the yeah, warm your belly. from Bangkok because I just went to Bangkok last year. And it's like the, the level of spiciness, they really don't get down from <laughs> <laughs> in the States, but yeah. Let's talk about the service a little bit. For me, the service, and maybe it's different because my family does go there a lot. So as soon as we went in there, they, they recognized it. actually my mother and they had the wine glasses ready out for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing, at least for us, the service is what we expect from a small neighborhood restaurant. It's just a very comfortable atmosphere. Yeah, they so. met my expectations for like a small restaurant. Yeah, I know, realize that some places you kind of do have the expectation of somebody who's going to come back and say, you know, are you enjoying this or whatever? And we really didn't have that. Do I consider that a deal breaker? Not particularly, because nine mm -hmm. times out of ten, when somebody asks me that question, my mouth is full and I can't answer it. Right. <laughs> so. right. Well, it's nice. It's BYOB. I know you brought champagne, right? Of course. It goes with everything. <laughs> so, exactly, right? <laughs> well, Jose, you chose elephant Thai. Sum it up for us. It is fresh, flavorful, authentic Thai food that never disappoints. Great. Okay. And Claudia? Not a special trip Thai place, but if you go, you will not be disappointed. Annie? Right. I would say if you're in the neighborhood, definitely give it a try. You can sample the Pad Kiwan tie for yourself at Elephant Tie, 5348 West Devon Avenue, 773-467-1168. Open for lunch and dinner Monday through Saturday. Reservations are accepted. Alcohol is BYOB and the average tab per person is 15 bucks. So on this week's show, we featured five Ravenitos in Pilsen, Boltwood in Evanston, and Elephant Tie in Edgebrook. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we visited 18th Street and checked out Five Rabanitos. Annie recommends it for high quality Mexican food made with a lot of love. Claudia absolutely loved the mole and had a fantastic dining experience. Jose said he loved everything about it and he can't wait to go back for more. Then we made our way to Davis Street and dined at Boltwood. Claudia recommends it for fresh ingredients, amazing presentation, and perfect flow of service. Jose loved the emphasis on seasonal selections, although their service could improve some. 
Annie liked her meal and thought it had a dynamic atmosphere. Lastly, we drove down to Vaughn and visited Elephant Thai. Jose recommends it for fresh Thai cuisine that satisfies every time. Annie thought the food was hit or miss and was looking for more flavor. Claudia appreciated her experience, but wouldn't go out of her way to return. We've had a wonderful time this week. I want to thank my guests, Annie Law, Claudia Perry, and Jose Macias. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please. I'm Catherine Diorio, and I'll see you then. Cheers. 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 For more information about the restaurants featured on Check Please, go to wttw.com slash checkplace.